Hey, Brick here with Fly Fish Food. Today I'm gonna to show you a streamer pattern that I've been tying for a couple years now. This one has a ton of movement. It's tied mainly with schloppen feathers, so it moves a ton in both lakes and rivers. I've used it a lot here in Utah on Strawberry Reservoir. It works well in Idaho, Montana. Check it out, this is the Rippin' Rooster. So the first thing is I'm gonna put a Bonio carp hook size 10 in the vise. I'm gonna use 210 Danville, 210 denier Danville black thread. I like the thicker thread because the articulation shanks on this guy will tend to snap smaller diameter thread pretty dang easy. It'll even snap this 210, so I like 210 because it's less likely to snap. So from here, I'm gonna start the tail. So what I'm gonna do to start off is take the Swiss CDC multi-clamp and I'm gonna take the rabbit strips from Fulling Mill, the rabbit zonker micro strips, they're in black. I'm gonna put that in the dubbing clamp. We have a skill builder on this that we'll link above if you wanna see how I do that. It'll be a lot easier to learn from that angle. I'm gonna cut the leather off of the rabbit strip inside of the clamp and then I'm gonna use this clamp in just a second, but from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie in the, the tail. So I'm gonna put right where that rabbit ends from where I cut it in the clamp, I'm gonna put that little past the eye of the hook because I like a little bit of bulk in the tail on this guy. So I'm gonna move the thread a little bit closer to the eye, tie that in, give it a couple thread wraps, and then cut that leather off so that there's, it doesn't crowd the eye of the hook. And I'm gonna tie that back to there. And then from here, I like a little bit longer tail on the back. So from here, I'm gonna cut a little V back here in that leather. Sorry, you might not be able to see it from that angle. But just like that, a little V in the tail. And that's the top of it. I'm gonna rotate it up. I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna poke that leather onto the hook from to where I wanna tie it in and where I want it to end. So right there, I'm gonna measure where that's gonna sit on the hook shank and I'm gonna poke it through. I'm gonna slide it off real quick. And then from here, I'm gonna seat that up there and tie it down. A couple thread wraps, same thing. Clip it off so it doesn't crowd the eye. Rotate and same thing on this. Measure that where that I put that V in the tail on top. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom at the same length, just like that. So then it kind of looks like a little fish tail. And then from here, I'm gonna do a dubbing loop and we're gonna get that Swiss CDC clamp full of fur and wrap that up. So I have my Stonfo rotor dubbing twister is one of my favorite tools. So I'm gonna take this clamp, stick it in here. Just like that. Spread it out how I want it. And then from here, I'll just spin it up. The Stonfo comb and brush tool, I'll comb that out a little bit. And I'm moisten my fingers and preen that back. I'll wrap that forward. I just preen these fibers back as I wrap. I'll tie that off, give it a couple thread wraps. Here, I'll whip finish. And then I take these next gen, oh, let me grab them out, these next gen sh articulation shanks, next generation from Fish School. This is a 15 millimeter shank. There's the triangular portion that you'll stab through, just like that. These shanks are super cool. The newer shanks are a little bit thinner than the older shanks, so you can tie a little bit smaller 
trailer hooks on the back. So there's seat that in the vise. And then from here, I'm gonna wrap this down, give it a thread base. I need to reposition that in the vise a little bit to make it a little bit more level. But this is the part that snaps that thinner thread, so that's why I like the 210. But you can use 140 if you'd like, but I prefer that bigger thread on it. And then I just do a nice level thread base because I'm going to palmer some schlop, schloppin' feathers up. Reposition that. So I like the schloppin' from Hairline, Nature Spirit, either one doesn't really matter. But from here, I don't like these wispier feathers on my schlop and I'm a little bit picky but so I like to take these off so the easiest way to do that is you just preen them out just like that pinch it down and then I grab all together and just pull back just like that and it strips the entire feather all the way down and I'll do that on the other side and then from here I take the tip of the schlop and I just preen those back it wraps a little bit easier a little bit nicer when you but when I pull them back like that and I'll tie in I have some other feathers prepared, but I'll tie in on this shank two feathers all together and I'll wrap those forward. I like, with these I like to take different scissors, so I just have these fiskers, just because the stems can kind of dull the tips of nicer fly tying scissors, so just get a little bit cheaper, cheaper scissors for these feathers. Wrap forward. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these schlopping feathers and palm room forward, preen the fibers back as I wrap. And right as I get up to the hook eye, I don't want to crowd it too much, especially with these stems of these schlopping feathers. We're getting closer to the base, they're a little bit wider. So I'll tie it off, give it a couple of thread wraps and then clip those off with those same fiskers. Just like that. And then wrap these. Clean it up just a little bit. Just like that. And from here, I'll whip finish. That helps kind of push the fibers back too as you build up a little head right behind the hook eye. And then I'm gonna take a 20 millimeter shank and I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I just did. I'm just gonna repeat the steps. I'll tie in three feathers for this shank though. So that's the 20 millimeter next generation articulation shank. Same thing, take that out. Seat that. Start that thread, same thing, build that thread base. Nice even thread base so those schlopping feathers lay nice and straight all the way across the shank. Okay, and from here I'll just comb this out. You can do this at the end, but I like to do it before just so these fibers don't get trapped anywhere. Just comb that out. And then from here, I'll take this out. So that's the back end of the fly. Then from here, I'll just take a, this is gonna be a fully mill streamer stripper, size one. And then this is just a rainbow cone from Hairline. And then I'll take the O2O lead wire. Where'd that go? Yeah, lead wire right here. O2O from Hairline. And I'll wrap this forward. There's a skill builder on this that Cheech also did that we can link in the, the video. I'll wrap this forward 15 times. Fifteen right there. If you just slide that up under the cone, if you cut that right now, that cone will just slide right back over that lead. So what I like to do is just wrap another four or five times. We'll do four here four or five times just right over top of it. And then from here, just break it off. Slide that up and that seats that cone nice. And then I'll break this off as well. 
just like that. And then from here, take that, my thread, I'll build up a little bit of thread down to keep that lead in place. Spin the thread so it sits flat on that wire. To the bend of the hook. And then now I'm gonna tie in my articulation wire. I just have regular articulation wire. This is red, you can use whatever color. I just like the red. I'm gonna tie that in going forward. And the reason I like to do it forward, I double it over because I've had huge fish rip my fly in half. Hit the back hook and it just rips the fly right out. So to negate that, I tie this in this way. I've seen other people do it this way, so it's definitely not my idea. Then from here, I just double it right back over itself. I leave it on the side so it doesn't really build up bulk. So it's on this back side of the fly. It's hard to see right now, but... And I come up over the top of the back of the hook so it helps that fly sit right behind where I tie in that back end of the fly. So from here, I'm gonna take a red articulation bead. The 3D beads is what they're called. And this is a small red one. So I'll put that articulation bead on and then I'll take the back end of the fly, make sure that that hook shank is down on that bonio carp hook. Thread that over, I'll stick this hook in this material clamp on this Renzetti. And you'll take this wire and feed it right back through that bead. And that allows that to sit in a loop just like that. You don't want that loop being super big, otherwise that will, it'll come around like this and foul hook. So you wanna make sure that that loop is nice and snug. And then from here, catch that right over top. and bring that and double that just like I did on the other side. Just like that, and I grab some wire cutters and clip that off just like that. And then from here I'll wrap back to cinch that loop down. Wrap that forward and then I like to have that even, nice even thread base. It helps those feathers like I did on the shanks. It helps those leather or the feathers wrap nice and even so they're not sliding backward and forward off of any bumps. So kind of a lot of thread, but it helps in the long run. I'll take some super glue to just ensure that that really doesn't move just like that. And now I'm gonna wrap more schlopping, I'm gonna take, this time I'm gonna take four feathers, and I'm gonna wrap those forward just like I did on those other shanks, so we can fast forward this portion as well. Slopping to go right up behind that cone. Just leave a little bit of space behind that cone, just like that. And from here, I'm gonna tie a, tie in a dubbing loop. And then I'll take another one of those zonker strips and I'll put it in the Swiss CDC clamp for another Rabbit fur dubbing loop. I have my fur in the, the Swiss CDC multi clamp. I'll put it in the loop. I like to spread this one out. So this is just building that head right behind that cone. So I'll spin that up. And then I'll comb that out. And then 
moist my fingers again, preen those fibers back so that as you wrap, they lay back and build a nice head right behind that. From here, just tie it off. couple of thread wraps. What you can do as well is you can put some red thread. You can swap it out, put some red thread behind that, give it a little bit of hot spot. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. Just a couple of finish turns. Clip that off and I'm going to take my cone or my cone, my comb and comb this guy out. And so how this fly came about, why I tie it like this and on the shanks and so much slop and as I was fishing a strawberry reservoir it kept happening all day I'd have big fish come up right to my streamer right up to the bank and then they would just stop right as they got to it and I was telling Lance Egan here in the shop I was telling Lance about it and Lance said what you need to do is just right at that last moment just change the direction of the fly the next weekend I went out same thing fish followed it they would stop so I threw my fly line to the left and I just stripped really hard changed the direction fish smashed it so I didn't want to keep doing that because sometimes when I would do that, the little fly line would scare the fish. So what I wanted is a fly that anytime I stripped it, if I'd pause it and I'd strip it once, it would change directions. And so that's what this does. Because of these articulation shanks, you can just see how much movement this fly has. And schloppen is one of the materials with the most movement that I've ever tied with. And so combine that with articulation shanks, and the fish can't handle it. So this is the Rippin' Rooster. I throw it on rivers, I throw it on lakes. It's one of my favorite flies at Strawberry Reservoir. I use it on sinking lines, floating lines. Give it a tie.